and we want as many people possible to be there. Also want to encourage you, we had a uh, meeting last night and finished out the rest of our calendar for uh, our calendar for the rest of the year. Amen. And we will be uh, putting that out uh, to you uh, shortly. If you have an email address, if you could get that to uh, uh, Sister Crystal, because if you have an email address, we want to be able to email this to you uh, so that we don't have to print so many copies off. Uh, uh, if you don't have, then we will, we'll, of course, it will be posted on the back. And also, uh, if you want it one printed out and you don't have email, we will uh, we will do that. We'll print it off for you. But uh, we're always looking for ways to uh, uh, save money and to save trees. And everyone say amen. 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 Uh, also want to remind you, uh, with our, um, with our uh, Loaves and Fishes program this month, we are going to be um, helping over 40, uh, 40 families we have registered for Loaves and Fishes. Uh, and one of the biggest expenses that we have um, is purchasing canned goods uh, uh, from Second Harvest. Uh, uh, that costs more because they, they sell it by weight. Uh, so we ask you, if you could, there's a receptacle in the back. Uh, as you come to service, if you could remember uh, to bring uh, a few canned goods, it would definitely be a blessing uh, to, to us. Uh, and to, um, to the Loaves and Fishes program. And everybody say amen. 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 We're going to, uh, we're going to go to the uh, word of the Lord today, but shortly, um, uh, we're, we're not going to go to the word immediately. I have a couple things I want to share with you. I'm going to preach to you for just a few uh, minutes today. Uh, well, maybe just more than just a few minutes, but I'm going to uh, preach with you today or for you today. Uh, and I hope you receive what the Lord has. There is hope for everyone. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say there is hope. There is hope. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you as you are uh, seated today. Amen. Uh, I want to share with you a song uh, and the lyrics to this song is called uh, All Hope is Gone. And I'm going to share this with you because I want you to see the mindset uh, uh, perhaps of many people who are in the world. And this song was written a few years ago uh, and it was put out by a, uh, uh, by a band, a heavy metal band called Slipknot. Uh, and I know uh, many of us are, are, are um, we're lovers of music and we like all kinds of music, uh, uh, but I don't know too many people uh, that are real big heavy metal fans, uh, uh, 
um, you know, because it just takes a special taste to uh, uh, even uh, enjoy that kind of music. I, I bet that. Uh, anyhow, uh, this song is called All Hope is Gone. And it starts out saying, the state of the nation, violation, a broken promise is as good as a lie. The hell is humongous. The devil's among us. And we will burn because we won't unite. We won't witness any more freedom. Where is anybody? Do we need them? I would rather fight than let another die. We are the problem. We're also the solution. All hope is gone. If you want, you cannot take it from me. If you think you can, you still don't know me. Let me tell you when I said it, I meant it. And I will always have the right to defend it. 50 seconds, 100 murders, the Bill of Rights is a bill of sale. What will you do when the war is over? What will you do when your systems fail? We have made the present obsolete. What do you need? What do you want? We'll find a way when all hope is gone. We've seen the fall of the elite. Bury your life, take your disease. We will end the world when all hope is gone. We've made the present obsolete. What do you want? What do you need? We will find a way when all hope is gone. We've seen the fall of the elite. Bury your life. Take your disease. We'll, we will end the world when all hope is gone. The wretched are wounded. The hungry starve to death at a place where no one goes. The air itself is a final breath. So discontent. Continue the antiseptic cash charade as the cry of justice comes. Our malignant fire fades. I am the reason your future suffers. I am the hatred you won't embrace. I am the wor worm of a pure distinction. I am the remedy spit in my face. All your lies and wars are outdated. All your subjects are dulling mind games. I can rattle off a million other reasons why, but it doesn't matter when the only only thing we love will die. We have made the present obsolete. What do you want and what do you need? We will end the world when all hope is gone. This is the mindset of some of the uh, people that we are surrounded by in this world that we live in. I do know that it is also the message of our enemy to try to tell the rest of the world and try to tell this uh, world that we live in uh, that all hope is gone. But this is not an old message and I want you to understand we do not need a brand new message. The message of hope was the very first message and it is the message that still needs to be preached today. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And there is hope for everyone. And it doesn't matter. And I know that as you look at the extreme mess that our world is in today, that many would say that there is no hope. And there, you may be at a place in your life where you feel that there is no hope and there is no answer for your problem. But I want to share with you in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort who comforteth, comforteth us in all tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. In other words the apostle is saying here we may be going through hard times but there is comfort and that comfort only comes from Jesus Christ and you and I do not need to look down or to be downtrodden we need to understand no matter how bad today is that we have a God and a Savior that is right there with us and there is hope Amen. And as the Apostle says here, that we might comfort uh, uh, not only ourselves, but we may comfort those who are around us. And we all go out into a world when we leave here today where we see children and we find, uh, uh, we find friends and family and people that we work with uh, who are going through some of the most uh, horrific things. Uh, yeah. This week I, I, I worked with a lady and I, I'm, I was just so troubled uh, uh, when I heard this. Uh, uh, she uh, 
she lost uh, uh, her 26 year old daughter who was stabbed to death uh, uh, in a motel room uh, uh, and, and when you hear something tragic uh, as that as I was reading uh, the, the news this morning uh, a report of a, an uncle and his niece uh, and her two children who were murdered they found them uh, uh, in the woods and the killer actually took them to the body the last body that they had not found this happened here in the last uh, few days and you hear these things and I know a lot of times we want to shut these things out and not pay attention to them because it is bad news and, and when you hear this it sounds like there is nothing but bad in this world but I want us to understand that there is hope and it may be dark out there but the darker it gets the brighter the light shines Amen. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 16 says, Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses uh, unto them, and hath committed unto us uh, the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, uh, as though God did beseech you by us. Uh, we pray you we pray you in uh, Christ's stead that ye be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, uh, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh, amen. Be because of Jesus Christ, there is hope for each and every one of us. There is hope for every man, woman, boy, and girl. There is hope for all of us, and we don't ever need to lose that hope. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And regardless of what happens, amen, we need to continue to place our faith in the Lord. And we need to continue to testify to one another and to this world that we live in. Amen. It may be terrible. Amen. And it may be dark. Amen. But Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And soon and very soon, all the trouble, all the heartache, all the torment, all the tribulation will be over. And when you Pay, place your heart in Jesus Christ. Everything will be all right. Can somebody say amen? amen? Joshua 24 and 15 in the English Standard Version says, And if it, see, and if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, uh, choose this day whom you will serve, uh, whether the God of your fathers uh, uh, that they served in the region beyond the rivers, uh, or the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, uh, we will serve the Lord. Uh, I want to tell every mama and daddy, I want to tell every boy and girl, uh, amen, if you will make up your mind, that I will stand faithful and I will stand on the word of God and I will serve him with everything that I have that everything will be alright Amen. But you have to make that choice. Amen. And, and there is hope for every one of us. And this is the anthem uh, uh, that we need to share with the world. That there is hope for every man. There is hope for everyone. There's a world full of normal people, uh, amen, who are in search uh, for hope and happiness. Uh, but I want to tell you something. Uh, we look at the world today, uh, amen, and what used to be normal uh, uh, is not normal anymore. And what we used to call strange uh, is, no, uh, is now the norm. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying today, uh, but some of you who are uh, maybe just in your early 20s, uh, you would not even be able to recognize uh, the world that I grew up in. And even though my parents thought it was a terrible, uh, dark, uh, and disgusting world, it was a far cry from the world that we live in today. 
Amen. And if you took someone who had passed away 25 or 30 years ago, amen, and you brought them back to this world that we live in, and they saw uh, what is going on and what is now considered normal, they would be in shock and they would have no idea that this is the same world that they came from. That's right. So there are people out there and they may be normal to the world standard. And I'll tell you what, we are strange to the world because we stand and we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And we want to live a life that is righteous unto the Lord, that is faithful unto a God that we have submitted ourselves to. And so we are called strange. But there are people who are out there who are a part of this normal world that are really looking for an answer and they realize that what they're living is not right. And even though people are telling them that it's okay, somewhere deep down in their heart, they realize, amen, that there is no hope in this life that they're living in. That there has to be more to what's going on. And so they are searching. And that's why you and I must let this world know, amen, we have the answer for hope and happiness. Amen. We have an answer Amen. Too many of these people have been pulled into darkness and they've had the rule placed over their eyes. Amen. And they're trying to find happiness and hope on their own. They're searching and they're listening. And the question is, amen, as they listen and they look for hope, are we saying anything or are we showing anything today? We have the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. But the only way the world's going to know is if you let them know. Amen. Amen. What this world needs. Uh, somebody say Jesus. Jesus. 2 Corinthians 1 and 3 says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, uh, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth uh, all, us in all our tribulation. He comforts us. And the reason He comforts us, and I'm rereading the verse uh, that I opened with because I want to focus on this next uh, statement. Uh, Paul says, "He Who comforteth us uh, in all tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble who would admit that the world is in trouble amen and so we are here to comfort those amen God has helped us so that we may help somebody else by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God I can't help anybody I can't tell anybody what to do but I can tell somebody what God has done for me amen and I can share the same comfort that he's given to me to them and that's what they need can you say amen and what every man, woman, boy, and girl needs is Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read out of the message. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 and 21 says, Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. Can somebody say amen? amen. We look at the Messiah that that way once and got it all wrong. In other words, the apostle is saying don't look at people on the outside. He said one time amen, when, when Jesus came as the Messiah to the Jewish people, they looked at him and saw he was just a common everyday man and they said there's no way that he could be uh, the Messiah. And Paul says that we did that way once and we got it all wrong. As you know, we certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new, the old life is gone and a new life burgeons. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and Him and they called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with Himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone, somebody say everyone. Everyone, everyone what He is is doing. We are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're, we are speaking for Christ Himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And verse 21 says, How? How, you ask? In Christ, God put the wrong on Him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. 
Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice so that every person ever born could be put right with God for the sole purpose that every person who has ever walked on this earth could have happiness, joy, hope, and peace. And somebody say amen. amen. Everyone is looking for hope. And they're thinking for the hope. They are looking for the hope we have found in Christ Jesus. Amen. And where are these searching people? They are all around us. Who are these searching people? They are every man, woman, boy, and girl. You work with them. You go to school with them. Maybe you see them when you're at the store. Now I've shared this song with you before and it's one of my favorites. It's from Casting Crowns. And the title of this song, of course the title of the first song that I shared with you today from the world's perspective is All Hope is Gone. But the title of this song is There is Hope for Every Man. The difference between these two songs is the first song was written by a worldly artist and the second song was written by somebody who has a heart after Christ. The song says, Amen, and it identifies those who are looking for hope. It says it is the person with everything they've ever wanted, all the toys and playing games. It is the person who pours your coffee every time you walk into your favorite restaurant. It's your child's favorite teacher. It's the leader of the band. They sit behind you in the bleachers. It is every man. It is the coach of every winning team, but he's still a loser in his mind. It is the soldier in the airport facing giants one more time. It is the woman shamed and haunted by the cry of unborn life. It is every broken man, nervous child, lonely wife. They all need to know there is hope for every man. There is a solid place where we all can stand. In this dry and weary land, there is hope for every man. There is a love that never dies. There is a peace for troubled times. The world needs to understand there is hope for every man. They say there seems to be too many roads to travel. They can't tell where they will lead. I am here to let you know there is hope for every man. Your life is scarred and your dreams unraveled. There is hope for every man. The world says all hope is gone. But the God that I serve and the word that I believe in says there is hope for every man. That's right, amen. And somebody say amen. amen. There is hope in this altar today. And that hope is a new life in Christ Jesus. There is hope in this Word of God that we call our Bible. Amen. And you may say that you're scared to step out and take the leap. And you want someone to follow who knows your pain and feels your weight. Let me read with you. We, let me tell you today, we know your pain. And God knows your pain. I may not have been through the exact same thing that you've gone through, but I have faced tribulation. Amen. I have faced pain and I have faced heartache. And there have been times the only one that I had to lean on was Christ Himself. But I want to tell you, as long as I had Christ, I had hope. Can you say amen? Amen. And you may be hurting today, but I want to tell you that you can find comfort in Christ Jesus. You can find comfort in just closing your eyes and saying, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to find help and hope, but I believe that there is a way. And somewhere inside of you there may be doubt. And even as the, the father of the, the dying boy said, Amen, you help my unbelief. There may be a little bit of doubt today. But if you'll ask the Lord to help you, I want you to know, amen, uh, what you're going through. Amen. God is able to lift the pain. God is able to lift the trouble. God is able to lift the burden off of your shoulders today. And I'm sure everyone that is here today, even those who are full of the Spirit, will say, I go through pain, suffering, and heartache myself. How many of you, amen, in the past year have gone through some pain? 
You've gone through some suffering. You've gone through some heartache. Uh, amen. Uh, but we can tell you and testify today that God, the God that we serve, uh, amen, He has heals. Uh, he can heal all of that. Can someone say amen? Amen. Amen. This church is full of people who hurt and have been hurt. Amen. And we're here to help. I want to tell you, sad stranger, I know what you're going through. And it's our purpose of helping you through what you're going through. This message of hope and happiness, uh, amen, and joy and peace uh, through Jesus may just seem too good uh, to be true. Uh, it may just seem to be too much to grasp, uh, amen, and He may seem like just a story that you can't relate to. But I want you, the one who is hurting and searching, and you don't know where to look or what to say, I want you to understand that that's why the church is here today. And that's why this church, as we leave here today, we do not leave that message of hope in this building. We take this message of hope with us because the church is not this building. The church is everywhere a believer will be at. Can you say amen? Amen. And so that message of hope, amen, we will share with you today and we will take it with us today. And I want you to know that you can find your hope and your happiness right here today. You may be wrestling with the uncertainty of your tomorrow. And you're grappling with the guilt and the pain of your yesterday. But I want you to know that there is hope for every man. The enemy will tell you that all hope is gone. Amen. But the Word of God tells me that there is hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. There is a Savior who will rescue you. There is a Spirit that will lead you. And there is a Father that will love you. And that's why we are here today. And that's why these doors are open. And we welcome whosoever will. Because we have hope for every man. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes and listen to the Word of God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Romans 5 and 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 2 and 12 says, Without Christ you have no hope. So in essence, maybe the song that the world sings, there may be a little bit of truth in it. Because if you don't have Christ, you don't have hope. But I want to tell you today, if you don't have Christ, it's not too late to take Christ. Colossians 1 and 5 says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Verse 27 of the same chapter says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 1 Timothy 1 and 1 says, Jesus Christ is our hope. Hebrews 6 and 18 says that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay upon the hope set before us. Verse 19 says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. 1 John 3 and 3 says, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I know the world has a different message. And their song says that hell is humongous. And the devil sits here waiting for you. Their way is a way of despair. But the message of Jesus Christ is there is hope for every person. I want to tell you there's hope for every person in here and out there. You should bow your heads and you close your eyes. If you need a cleansing there is hope. If you need forgiveness, there is hope. If you lost your way and you want to get back on track, 
there is hope. If you need healing today, there is hope. I want to tell you, there is hope for every person that's in need today. Maybe you're here today and you're looking for hope. I want to tell you, you can come down here and just one little talk with Jesus can turn your whole world around. Maybe you're here today and there is a you're, you're facing a financial struggle. You're facing, uh, you're, you're, you're facing a, a physical struggle. Maybe there's sickness uh, in your body. I want to tell you there's hope in Jesus Christ. The Scripture tells me that by His stripes uh, we are healed. Amen. And the Scripture tells me that we can pray. Amen. And He will hear our cry. Whatever it is today, I want to tell you there's hope. There's hope. I invite you to come down here today and take a moment. Maybe you are all right, but you have a family, you have friends, you have somebody you've been trying to help for the longest time, and their world is just in the biggest mess. Their world is upside down, and, and it really looks like there is no hope for them. You can change that today. You can come down here and pray a prayer. You can pray, Lord, touch their heart. Lord, get their attention, Lord Jesus. Uh, let your spirit work on them. Amen. It is our responsibility to not only share that hope, but also to fill the gap for those uh, who don't know how to cry out to Christ Jesus. Uh, you and I can cry out for them right now. And I invite you to take this opportunity in Jesus' name. Yeah. 